everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this little flip kind of piece on the front of the card. It's It came, I started to do a waterfall card. I'm, I was going back over my very old tutorials and I've done a couple of waterfall cards and a lot of people have been requesting that I do some other versions. So I started to do that and then I just decided to stick this piece down so it becomes this little like fixed piece. I don't know, I really like it. Just... I just think it's really sweet. So you can have multiple on here and have it with them all kind of cascading, but then it was looking a bit too much like the other waterfall card I'd got done. So I just thought I'm just going to do the two like that and it just sits, you know, kind of just sits up like that. And I just, yeah, I really like it. So I hope you do too, because that's what I'm going to show you to make. But uh, you can see on the side there, and then when that opens, that's how. So it does, it kind of locks in, it stays there, but it does fold down and then inside... I have this beautiful paper, which I'll show you in a moment, but it's a five by seven card and it just, yeah, so it stands up like a normal card, but I just thought it was something a little bit different on the front. So you basically, once you've made this piece, you can put it on any size card you want. So it will fit on the smaller size cards and obviously much, much bigger. And you might also have it on the landscape and you could have maybe a few together. You could put it on a gift tag. You could have it on a gift bag or on a, the lid of a gift box. Like it's, it's just that element. And once you, you know how to do them, they're pretty straightforward. So, but um, yeah, I just had some fun with it. So let me show you how I made this one. Okay, so I'm using these new papers. These are by the Paper Boutique and it's the Ocean Breeze. They are beautiful. So this is my next favorite now on from the Magical Forest because that one's now finished. So I'm gonna work through this one. And it's just, I love the colors. And as I was saying, and it was really nice that some of you agreed that there just doesn't seem to be a lot of feminine nautical papers around. And when I saw these ones, I thought I need to have them. And uh, they're just really, really pretty. And they're just that, you've, you've got all those lovely nautical elements, but then they've added beautiful roses and just the, the sprays of flowers and you've got really soft feathers. And just the color palette's just really nice with this kind of peachy pink kind of, you know, throughout. I just thought it was lovely. So I've got the embellishment pad and I've got the paper kit. I always like to go for the paper kit because you receive the toppers. And for me, it's these toppers that really kind of set it off. So you get four with, let me get one that I've not gone into. So you get four like this. So I've used the best wishes one on this card and then inside I've used the lighthouse. So those two kind of go together. And then for this one, I'm using for a wonderful friend on top, then when you open it, you're gonna have that lovely pattern there. And then it says, thinking of you on your special day. And I just thought that was a really nice one to have together. So that's, yeah, so for these two cards, I've used all the square toppers and then you get, so you get four of those and then you get four of the circle ones. And I've got a nice project that I'm gonna do with the circle ones, they're really lovely. And I like that you've got the two sentiments and then you've got a nice image to kind of sit with each of those. And again, you get four, so you get lots of toppers. There's, you know, you've got plenty to work with. And for anybody that's new to my channel and doesn't, you know, never heard of the Paper Boutique, on the back they always show you everything that comes within that collection. So I'll link everything below as always. Go and check it out if it's, you know, something that you you like. But um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. So you will see this one feature, feature a lot more. Okay, so like I said, I'm working on a five by seven card. So I've just got a pre-made card base here. If you don't have a pre-made one, then you'll want a piece of 10 by seven. And along the 10 inch side, you just want to score at five. Fold in half when you've got your card base. Then I have my decorative paper to cover the front. So this is a piece of five by seven. You don't have to, you might want to do a matte first and then do a layered piece. It's entirely up to you, but I just quite like having the whole piece and then just this kind of element in the middle. So that's a piece of decorative paper for the front, five by seven, and I have another piece of five by seven on the inside. This was one of the eight by eight sheets. It's a little bit longer because I like to stick them down and then trim around the edge just so I get a real nice finish. So again, five by seven for that piece. And then these pieces here, so you want two pieces that are three and three eighths of an inch. So that's the this kind of gray blue. And then my pieces on top, so those toppers come in at three and one eighth. So you'll want one, two, three, because this one will be stuck down. That's the piece that's just gonna pop up, okay? And then finally for our mechanism. Now for the mechanism I'm using, and that's why I got this size as well, because I'm using my hunky dory punch. So I will link this one below, so I'm doing the largest two and a half. So this piece is two and a half by the width of A4, which is eight and a quarter, okay? So along the eight and a quarter side, you just wanna score at four and a half and five. Okay, and that's all we need to do. And then I've got this piece here, 
which is to decorate. You don't need to have the punch, you'll just have a flat end and you could maybe round it off if you've got a corner punch or just keep it as it is, it doesn't matter. And then this is one and a half by three and a half, okay. And then I've got a little bit of ribbon there to cover this hole here. You could feed the ribbon through if you wanted to but I just wanted to keep mine covered. So with this one here you just want to fold the top score line, just fold it in half. Okay, so it'll go down along the back there. Don't worry that they don't line up. This end here, I'm going to pop into my punch. So just open it back up again there, just slide that one in. Okay, so now I've got that nice finish here. Okay, and then also you need this piece here, which is three quarters of an inch by five and a half. I must have dropped my bit on the floor because I've just had to cut it again. And basically, with this, when you open it up, this mechanism just inside there is this piece which helps this slide and stay on that angle so again it will make sense when we start putting it together so what you want to do first of all is grab your toppers so the one that you want to have on the inside you're going to stick along this line here now for the minute you only want to run a bead of glue along here so basically you're going to stick the top and then eventually we'll stick the bottom but all of the inside will be free because this bit's going to kind of feed between it so the easiest way to do that for the minute is just put you could use double sided tape as well don't worry you don't need to use the liquid glue but I'm just going to run a bead of glue just along there so I'm just under the score line and this is going to line up that one so you want to make sure you've got equal overhang on each side there and just make sure it all I also done this measurement so that it would sit nicely within that detail of my punch. So like I said, if yours is plain here now, just round off the edges, add some decorative paper, which we're gonna do in a moment. Probably should have done that before, but it doesn't matter. And um, you know, yeah, you can add all, all kinds to it. But once I add this bow, see how pretty that's gonna be just on there. Once that decorative paper's on there as well, it's all gonna to come together nicely. Okay, so that's that one. And then this one here, you're gonna stick on top of this piece. And you do need to burnish that second one. <laughs> So just fold it down there like I just have, but you can do it when it's all together again, that doesn't matter. So just line that one up now over the top, but make sure it sits with the top of that score line there, okay? So you want it to be right up as close as you can. Just move that across a bit, and there we go. And then when that one lifts up, this is where your little flip piece comes in, all right? So yeah, just go and burnish the score line so they both fold. She should have the five inch score line at the top there and then that other score line, that second one, just fold it as you flip that one up. Okay and then this piece here inside I'm going to stick this piece on top because it will go in and you don't see, I haven't done it all the way to the whole height of this piece because you don't see any of it so don't worry about that and I've got this hole on here because that by default cuts the hole you know, ideally I don't want the hole there, but my ribbon's going to cover it anyway. So I'm just going to stick this piece down. And just line it up with the hole there. Okay, so that's just stuck in there. But like I said, don't worry that it doesn't go up there or cover any of this if you're using the same one as me. Or any decorative edge punch, you might have some nice dies there and stuff. Just, you know, work with what you've got. But you want to end up with this. So you'll have the shorter piece on the back, then you'll have your first piece and then the second piece. But that one won't fold right over properly. Don't, don't worry because we've already stuck it over there. That's not what we're aiming for. Okay, then we want this piece here and you're going to pop it over the top of this piece, all right? Doesn't matter where it is at the moment because we're going to move it, but pop it in there and then flip it over and just wrap it. Try and keep it as straight as you can and just not tight, just where it naturally kind of folds. Just wrap it around there. So and it should overlap by about a quarter of an inch. Okay. And just pop some glue and just stick that down. Don't stick it to anything else, you're just sticking it together so that then it should slide up and down. So we've just created a little belly band around those two inside pieces. Okay, and then you want to bring that one down now so it's almost to where that one is, this one here, okay. And then grab your card, so now we'll move on to this piece and decorate that. So just leave that for the minute. Then with this piece here now I just want to stick that over there and I'm going to stick this one inside here.
Okay, so I'm just trimming around the edges. So whenever I want a kind of mat to cover the whole area, in this case five by seven, I always make it that little bit bigger and then turn it over and cut around it. And that way you just do get a perfect kind of finish, unless you're someone that likes when they do their mats and layers, use a pencil. I know lots of people do that rather than actually take the measurement because although this says it's five by seven and this one is, you will see very, very slight differences in measurements on different guillotines and trimmers and things like that. So a five by seven on your trimmer may be slightly different to this five by seven here. So I just rather do it that way. And then I've got a little bit of overhang here, but I can just trim it. Always turn it upside down so you can see where it is. But now I've got a really nice, like perfect cover of pattern paper. There we go. Okay, so now we just need to attach this. So where you've got that piece sliding, you want to bring it down so it lines up just slightly above that inside one here. So if I bring it up, so there's my, in fact, if I take it off, there's the two there, okay? So they're sandwiched together nice and flat. Pop that back on there. And you want to stick it so it comes up about a quarter of an inch, okay? So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue under there and just stick it in place. And then you're going to add glue all over this piece, but don't touch the piece underneath. So I'm sticking all my glue. If I put my finger under there, I'm only sticking it over this piece here. Okay. And then just position it. Now bear in mind, when you lift that up, it does move up towards the top of the card more so. So I had mine kind of centered when it's all nice and flat. So I'm going to go for about the same again. So I'm going to do there. Okay. And then this piece now here you just want to pop some glue just along the top of this tab so basically now that that little belly band is kind of free to move up to where we stick this piece on this end so that becomes the stopper which is why it stops there because that's where we've glued that piece on so if i lift this up you want to add your glue you can add it to the bottom of this. If you flip it over, it's a little bit fiddly and you can just run a bead of glue along the inside here. Just the bottom is all you want to cover. But with mine here, where it lies flat, that's where I'm going to add my glue. So if I lift this up here, it literally is just on this piece. So the best way to do it is where it lies flat. Okay, so there I've just ran that, that glue just there. Okay, but now when I lie it flat, just push it down. Okay, so wherever it sits flat is where you want to just add the glue. And now what we've done is we've sandwiched that belly band so it can move this up and down. And there you will have that lovely little piece. So like I said, it's a little bit odd, a little bit strange, but I, I just like it. And you know, that's how sometimes things happen. It's just by intending to do something else and then it turns out this way. And now that is gonna stick just there. And I think it looks really pretty. I don't know, I might frame this one. I think it's different with the stripes on that one, but I do like the two of them. I might do a little frame, we'll see. So I'm gonna put some hot glue either side for me of this um, hole punch, because I wanna cover that. And then sit that over the top. So there you have it. Just this kind of little flip, kind of waterfall-ish. I don't know, it's just a, like a page flip. Maybe that's what I should call it. Or f yeah, page flip, flip page. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to call it, but there you have it. And then there's the other one, the original one. I do, I just think they look really nice. There you have it. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you give it a go. I do like it, there's something about it. I think it's gonna look really nice for gift tags and stuff. And it's easy for whoever gets it. You're naturally, as soon as you pick up the card, you just go to lift that up, thinking of you on your special day. Sending you best wishes, dearest friend. And then you've got a lovely area inside to be able to write your message. I've gone for the same one on both just because I thought that tied it all together and matched it really well. But yeah, there you have it. Quick card tutorial from me today. <laughs> Let me know if you did enjoy it. Give me a thumbs up if so and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.